got one picking up his whole life to move across the country. You got another one who already got 17,000 kids and they making it work, but you breaking up over a nap. <laughs> Whatever, okay? What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Roxy, with Roxy Says, and we're going to talk about it. Today, we are reviewing Love is Blind DC Season 8, right? Season 7, Episode 10, okay? So much happened in this episode. Child, when I was watching it, I screamed at my computer about 10 times. So let's get right into this video. But before we do, please don't forget to hit like, comment, subscribe, and make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you're made aware every time I post a new video. If you think you've already subscribed, take two seconds just to double check because sometimes YouTube unsubscribes people, okay? Let's get straight into this episode. So it's 13 days until the wedding and we see Nick and Hannah taking engagement photos. Hannah is commenting that her arms are longer than Nick's and and remember, in the previous episode, Hannah says that she feels like men might feel emasculated by her because she's taller and bigger than them. But I feel like that's also an insecurity of her own, being taller and bigger than Nick. And I do think that Nick feels a way about it because he has commented on her height since the reveal. You picked a good day to wear the heels, huh? I thought you were secure. <laughs> so that was a really short scene. I guess not much happened. And now we're only 12 days until the weddings. And here we are with our favorite couple, Ramses and Marissa. And clearly there is a problem. Now switching from like the three to five that we've spoken about to like sooner. Is there anything else, you know, that's gonna... Like, I mean, imagine things shift. will change over time. It's good. It's all good. So we learned that in the pods, their discussion about children, the timeline was three to five years. And now Marissa is the one who's switching it up and saying that she wants to have children sooner. Now, Marissa, that is an issue. If y'all decided on a specific timeline in the pods and now you're switching it up, I understand why Ramses is a bit upset about that. But on the flip side, Ramses, if y'all did decide on three to five years, was there an expectation for her to be on birth control? Was there an expectation for you to never wear condoms? What was the discussion like as far as preventative measures while y'all were in the pods? So clearly the vibe is still off. Marissa goes to the bathroom. She's like, she just needs some space. And then she comes back out like nothing happened. And she's like, okay, so what are we cooking for breakfast? And Ramses is like, oh, we kind of have to finish this conversation. And I agree. You can definitely tell that Marissa does not like confrontation and honestly I don't think Ramses likes it either but he sees that this is not a conversation that they can just sweep under the rug it's important and you especially can't sweep this under the rug when y'all are supposed to be married in less than two weeks Marissa is explaining to Ramses that sometimes she feels overstimulated and she doesn't want to be touched and Ramses says that he understands and it's fine but he needs to figure out if this is something that he can deal with long term are we talking about when Marissa is on her cycle because it wasn't that clear to me is this just all the time or is it with the way she's feeling right now. Because child, if it's just while she's on her cycle and Ramses, you can't wait a couple of days. What's wrong with you? You need to hop on the bus with Steven, okay? Because clearly y'all got something going on. I don't want to come off as if I'm just trying to like, I'm just trying to have sex, but I'm just like, I feel so like it's a big decision. And I understand Marissa's concerns. What are you going to do when she's pregnant? What are you going to do if she's dealing with postpartum? What are you going to do? And at this point, I'm just waiting for Ramses' ex-wife to pop out and say, we didn't break up because of no difference in religion. We broke up because he wouldn't give me a rest. He wouldn't get off of me. He wouldn't let me breathe. Did you know, like, there's, like, a high percentage of men when their wives get cancer, they cheat on them? Yeah, like, that's going to be an issue for you. There's periods before you have the kid. Postpartum, when you have kids, like, is this going to be an issue for you? That that's a... That's a big thing, yeah. And I said something along these lines in my previous review. Remember when Alex was talking about both her mom and dad having MS? And I said that statistically, men are more likely to leave women when they are dealing with some type of health crisis. Yeah, Marissa clearly is aware of this too. So we see Marissa expressing her concerns, which are valid. And from what I'm getting from this conversation, it seems like Mr. Progressive Ramses just wants someone who is ready to go all times raw, I might add, okay, who will also make sure that she doesn't get pregnant and she makes sure that he doesn't have to worry about anything other than his sexual gratification, okay? And on top of that, in this scene, Marissa keeps telling Ramses that she feels overstimulated and he keeps touching her. Stop, Stop touching, touching her. her. In my opinion, less than two weeks of time is not enough for them to come to a compromise. Just break up. Just break up. It ain't that deep. Y'all only known each other for four weeks. Y'all could break up. Child, so now we're at Tim's house and Alex is meeting Tim's parents. Now, I might be nitpicking, but I did not like that that girl hugged his parents with one arm. Take your hand out your pocket and give my parents the hug they deserve. I would be... That alone would have pissed me off. But anyway, we find out that the family calls Tim Drake because I guess his dad is Big Tim and 
Tim is the junior, so they call him Drake, okay? Tim's parents have been married for 40 years and we know that they have been through so much, especially going through the loss of two children. So it's really nice to see that they've been able to make it through such pain together. To my surprise, Tim's mom actually says that she likes the idea of the experiment and the idea of them finding love in the pods. Now Tim's mom lets Alex know off the bat that sometimes Tim's vulnerability can come off in ways where he separates himself, okay? So we see that if his mom is saying that, that is clearly something that Tim has done for the majority of his life. When he's feeling vulnerable, he will separate or try to remove himself from the situation, which is what he said he tried to do when him and Alex had their first argument. Remember, she put her hand over his mouth. No, 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 no. But yeah, that's what he did. But in this conversation, Alex tells Tim's parents that she totally understands that when Tim needs his space, she's gonna give it to him, okay? And she will let him come back when he's good and ready. So Daddy Tim is just sitting there in silence while Tim's mom is talk, talk, talking. And we see her tell Alex that they take marriage very seriously. They're saying for play, play. Okay, and Alex reassures them that she does as well. We don't believe in divorce. I don't want you to think I am taking this lightly. I really honor your your marriage and your relationship. So we see Tim step outside with his parents to have a private conversation and we finally get a couple words out of Papa Tim. And they're both letting Tim know that Alex seems lovely and they like her, but Tim voices some concerns and his mom gives him some words of wisdom. I don't think we're always in sync when it comes to some of the lighter things. You know I'm not physically affectionate. Do not touch me. That's just how I am. We just got in an argument. I'm not going to cuddle. There's no one perfect. You're never going to find perfection. But ultimately, Tim's parents say that they trust his instincts and they support him in his decision. Child, so now we're back at Ashley and Tyler's apartment and I'm like, why is he still here? Don't he got like three bottles to make back at home? Go home and be with your children, sir. What you crying about? She said. Girl, like I said in my last review, you needed to ask Tyler why the hell he was crying. Don't come for the dog. Don't come for, listen, don't take your anger out on that dog you about to piss me off. Take it out on Tyler. He deserves it. He's the one that lied to you. Leave the dog alone. Ashley tells Tyler that she doesn't hate him. She's just disappointed and she's trying to navigate her emotions after finding out all this new information, okay? Tyler says that he appreciates her for at least talking to him about it and wanting to know more because she doesn't have to do that. And don't. I had a very close friend, her and her wife wanted to have a baby. God telling me, you know, help someone else. They couldn't afford sperm donor, and it felt good. Do the kids know what you look like? I don't think so. You said no. The lie detective determined that was a lie. <laughs> Baby, the way that Tyler is looking Ashley right in her face and straight up lying to her, straight up lying to her, saying that the kids don't even know what he looks like when he's in pictures with them and he spent holidays with them, crazy, crazy. I honestly think that on this show, the second that you get your phones back, your laptop back after your honeymoon, the very first thing that you need to do is run a background check on your partner. You have their full name, you have what they told you, now you need to do your own homework because clearly, <laughs> clearly whoever does casting, whoever does the background checks, let a couple of things slip through the cracks, you need to do your own work for yourself. Someone is dropping the ball. Now I don't know if they're doing it on purpose for ratings or if it's just pure carelessness, Either way, y'all need to make sure that you're protected. Do your own background checks as soon as you get your devices back. Because as someone mentioned in my previous review, had Ashley done her own background checks, she would have found at least one document regarding Tyler and this custody battle or the child support or whatever, because it's all public record. She would have at least found something, okay? But I do wanna be fair to Ashley because in this situation, we have the luxury of watching these episodes, being privy to extra information that Ashley doesn't necessarily have in these scenes, right? During this conversation with Tyler, all Ashley knows at this point is that Tyler lied to her about not having children. He wasn't forthcoming with the information about being a sperm donor, okay? And he has no relationship with the children. The children don't even know what he looks like. Now, I honestly feel like him withholding that information in the pods alone is more than enough reason for Ashley to chuck up the deuces to this dude. But I can also see her trying to rationalize it by saying, okay, he was just a donor. He has no relationship with the kids or with the mother. So maybe Maybe it's not that bad. I guess the only thing we can do is take it hour by hour. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll give it a try. 
So now we're only a few days until the wedding. We see Garrett and Taylor. They go on a little calligraphy workshop date. And Taylor pulls out the stack of her grandparents' letters that she wants to include in her wedding because she says that that's a way for her to feel like her grandparents are there to celebrate that moment with them. And Taylor says that her and Garrett do something, which I find is really cute. She says that her and Garrett leave little love letters for each other around the apartment and they hide them so that the other one can find them. Oh, I think that's so cute. I think that is so cute. So since they write these letters to each other, they think it'll be really special to have a writing station at the wedding. So we see them each pick their favorite line out of the grandparents' letter, and that's what they're going to use for the wedding. So during this date, we get some information about Garrett's mama. She may not want to be a part of it, but we can at least talk to her about it. You think she might not come? She's still struggling with it. I'm sure she'll love to have you as a daughter, and we'll fully embrace that when that day comes. Who's surprised? Who's surprised? What did I say in my last review? That lady said, this girl, Taylor, came into my house, sold me a dream, and now she about to snatch my son and move him across the country. She's not happy, and I totally understand. Now, I do like Garrett and Taylor together, even though they're going to get into a little issue later in this episode, but I one million, bazillion, gajillion, quadrillion percent understand Garrett's mother saying, I'm not coming to that wedding. <laughs> I'm not coming to that wedding. I was okay with this whole little situation. Okay, you getting married. But now you want to add a move on top of that? No, I ain't coming. I ain't coming. So next we see Hannah and Nick, and they're at a jungle gym. And Hannah is being her usual annoying self. It's a team effort. Who do you think did better? I would say you, but I learned. You showed me the way. Just you like... Your icks are starting to become just funny to me. And then I went through it like, you know, I, like I with Grace. Now listen, as much as I do not think that Nick is ready to be a husband, I think he's really nice to Hannah. He consistently spares her when she does not deserve it. And I think that Nick is actually trying. I will give him that credit while Hannah continues to be condescending to him as a joke. You like the joke, huh, Hannah? Come around my crew. Come around my crew, we can joke. <laughs> okay, you wanna joke, we can joke. And exactly what Nick and Hannah's brother said, that she can dish it but she can't take it, then you need to shut your mouth, baby. And don't let Nikki D be my brother or my cousin or anything like that, baby, okay? You will come over to Thanksgiving dinner, I'll let one joke slide, but the second joke you make about him, I'm on your ass. We gonna start joking, you will never show your face at a family dinner ever again when we done with you, okay? Cause you are not gonna make Nick your little punching bag. Now are there things that I think that Nick should know by now? Yes, but the way that Hannah is going about this is pissing me off and all I'm wondering is how Nick's parents feel watching this back because Hannah made such a great impression on them. She really put on. She really put on for that meeting. I just want to know how they feel watching all of this back and seeing how she berates their son. Really. I really would like to see it. So we see the two of them discuss their readiness to get married and Nick says that he's even more ready now because the meetings with both sets of parents went so well. You think like you're ready to get married in two weeks? Yeah, getting both of their support. You know, that was really important for me. My opinion's the only opinion that matters, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> you didn't really answer my question though. Are you ready to get married in two weeks? Yeah, I said yeah. Okay. Um, Hannah, the next time you go to the supermarket and spend $300 on groceries, make sure you ask some Q-tips to clean your ears out. He answered you the first time, sis. Sometimes I feel like, you know, you do think I'm like a level below you. I just want to be treated as an equal. You, you get know. treated like an equal and you start contributing like an equal. I want you to be like an active listener, an active partner. Active listener? Active listener? Hannah girl, do you hear yourself? Are you actively listening to the crap that comes out of your mouth? Huh? Hannah clearly gets a kick out of embarrassing Nick on camera and we gonna see her do it even later. You know what Hannah reminds me? If you are a fan of The Office, this, this whole relationship reminds me of the dinner party episode. If you have seen it, if you know, you know. Just cringe AF and you feel like, am I supposed to be like witnessing this back and forth between this couple? Should I, should I just leave? That's what this couple gives. And it's because of Hannah. Nikki D, go back home to your mama. Go back home to your mama, you don't need this. You don't. All jokes aside though, this conversation really pissed me off. It made me really sad for Nick. It is obvious that Hannah does not respect Nick and she gets a kick and an ego boost out of making herself feel like she's better than Nick. She obviously has her own insecurities, so being with someone who she thinks that she's better than makes her feel good about herself. She feels like she knows more than Nick and she will bring it up every chance that she gets. It would be one thing if Hannah approached this relationship differently, but from what Nick is saying, Hannah will not miss an opportunity to make Nick feel like he's dumb. Hannah, you need to calm down. Nick, you need to break up with this girl 
now, okay? This is a match made in hell. And then when Nick asks Hannah if she's ready to get married, she's like, yeah, I'm ready to get married because I'm mature. And like, girl, you're not though. You're not. Yes, you pay your own bills. Yes, you've been on your own because your parents cut you off at the age of 18, but you ain't ready to be anyone's wife either. Girl, get off my screen. So next we see Marissa and Ramses and we see she put some flower petals on the bed and she says that she wants to do wedding planning. And I'm like, girl, y'all need to do family planning. (laughs) That's what y'all need to be working on. Forget the wedding. Marissa says that she doesn't want to do a mother daughter dance. Ramses says that they can put a photo of his father at the entrance to commemorate him. Marissa does not want an owl because she says that she wants the families to be together. And Ramses is like, okay, so like we just going to drop down from the sky. How how is this going to go? And Marissa also says that she wants to make sure that this wedding is different from Ramses' previous wedding because as we know, he was previously married. And Ramses is like, girl, don't even worry about that. This That shouldn't even be a thought, okay? Marissa also tells Ramses that now he knows that once a month, as far as affection, emotions, intimacy is concerned, it will be off for a couple of days, okay? And I'm like, the fact that she has to explain this to him is like... <laughs> what are we doing? But Ramses says that he understands this and he feels so sure about marrying her. And Marissa says that she feels the same and they give each other these fake ass smiles and then they start making out. I'm like, okay, whatever. So baby, now we get to this scene that really had me screaming at my computer. Okay, we got Tim and Alex and surprise, surprise, they're beefing. My parents drove up here 10 hours. As soon as the cameras cut, you decided to go to sleep. I was exhausted. We talked for hours about what I would be to them as a vessel. I had been trying to communicate with you all day during the day. I talked to you three times yesterday. You were asleep for most of the day. I was asleep for an hour. Whatever it was. Uh -uh Uh-uh-uh. Tim, let me stop you right there. Sleeping for the entire day versus sleeping for one hour are two very different things. Two very different things. Not being able to get in contact with someone for the entire day versus speaking to them three times for the day are two very different things. You're not going to rewrite history. And I'm happy that Alex spoke up for herself. Now, y'all already know, I don't see it for Alex either. But this conversation... Oh, Tim acted a whole fool. It's not a matter of your truth or how long it felt like she was sleeping. How long did she actually sleep? Was it an hour or was it the entire day? Stop playing. And at this point, I actually liked how Alex was handling the conversation. She stayed in her seat. She advocated for herself. Yeah, she didn't raise her voice. She didn't put her hands on anybody's mouth because we don't do that, okay? And she called him out when he exaggerated and flat out lied on her. And Alex also let Tim know that she was ready and willing to learn and compromise within the relationship. Alex says that she spoke to Tim's parents for four hours four hours and after that she was tired so she took a nap for one hour and that is what Tim is upset about and remember in this conversation Alex said that she spent all day being a vessel for Tim's parents I'm inclined to believe that she is alluding to the sister situation that I've mentioned previously in my videos I wish that we got more information on that I think that Tim has a very specific idea of what he wants his wife to be and I would not be surprised if a lot of those qualities are qualities that reminds him of his sisters like I said in my previous videos Tim is clearly still grieving the loss of his sisters which is 1 million percent understandable but I feel like until he's done more with that grieving process he should not be looking for a wife right now the day with the texting situation she said that she was working all day she communicated with him during that day and she called him when she got off of work to tell him that she was done and he didn't feel like talking he was upset about that too then tim drops the bomb on alex i have to be honest with myself that the answer between you and i for me is no all right i'm here to listen if you would like to but i mean is your mind made up That is what I said, yeah. Attitude, I just don't understand it. And with that in mind, I'm glad we can at least agree that I don't ever want to see you again. Baby, the way I would have got up from my seat so fast, Tim wouldn't have even been able to finish his sentence. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? And you could see it all over his face with that little... This was get back for him, for their previous argument. This was definitely get back for Tim. When I am in the wrong, I am a person who is so apologetic. I I have no problem apologizing. I will apologize one million times. I will make sure that the person knows that I am truly sorry for whatever the situation is. But baby, when I'm right, (laughs) when I'm right, you can't tell me shit. Nothing at all, okay? You can't tell me a damn thing. And if I was Alex in this situation, I wouldn't be explaining a damn thing to Tim because you're really about to break up with me over a one-hour nap. Now, I will say this. 
The only thing that I was like, Alex, girl, what? Was when Tim said that he had woke up at, what, 8 in the morning to go to the supermarket, right? And he had to season the food, make the food. And then on top of that, he had to turn around and wash dishes. Alex, you dead wrong. Alex, you are dead wrong. If I was Tim, I would have been pissed off too. But with this nap thing, oh, Tim, I wouldn't even let you finish your sentence. Boy, get out my face with this shit. Bye. And Tim is saying that his mind is made up, but you can see it all over his face. He wants Alex to grovel. He wants Alex to explain herself because if that wasn't the case, he would have gotten up sooner and made his way out. If your mind is made up, what do you? What more do you need to hear? He's just being petty at this point. And at that moment, I was yelling at my computer, Alex, get up, get up, make your exit now because I could already see what Tim was trying to do. He was trying to have a moment, but Alex keeps talking and now she's pissed because she's like, you just met my dad. You had him crying, you got him all emotional only to break up with me two days later over a damn nap here's the issue tim thinks that he's still on the navy base okay and then he has this passive aggressive catty ass way of communicating which is annoying af and like i will continue to say alex is far from perfect but like i said in a previous review tim isn't really looking for a wife that he can learn and understand and love and compromise with he is looking for a woman to follow his rules shut the hell up and birth a daughter for him that is what he's looking for. If Tim came out and said, look, when I came to your apartment the other day, it was messy, it was dirty, it's been bothering me this entire time, I can't do it, I would have respected that more than this nap situation, okay? If Tim said, when you met my parents, you kept one hand in your pocket, you didn't hug my mama with both arms, I can't do it, I would have respected that more. But this nap, Tim, really? Okay, it's cool. So next we see the couples. They're getting their little Amazon packages because they're getting ready for this little party. I don't remember what the theme was, if it was the flappers or Great Gatsby or whatever. But I saw Garrett's abs, though. <laughs> I was like, okay, Garrett, I see you. So we see Nick and Hannah and they're speaking about the upcoming party and Nick says that he thinks that other people are gonna want some closure tonight and Hannah's like, okay, well, who do you want closure with? Don't talk about the other people. Who you trying to see? And he says that he does wanna get some closure with Katie because they connected in the pods and she was his number one for a couple of days and he's like, actually, it's not that I need closure. It's just gonna be a simple conversation and I'm like, oh boy. And of course, Hannah's like, oh, I'm cool with it. That's no problem, girl, bye. So we see everyone everyone arriving and I'm like yes because everyone looks so cute in their outfits everyone looks so joyous and happy and then we get Garrett and Taylor I just want to make it incredibly clear that if other women from your past are talking to you you're just shutting it down yeah, I totally 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 understand I just liked the message I don't want to say it's okay right now because that just like wouldn't be I understand. honest I understand. let's go to the party all right, all right, hang on. so at this point I was like okay this was a cute calm little disagreement it looks like they're both acknowledging each other's feelings it looks like Garrett is being 100% forthcoming by even telling Taylor that his ex texted him he just hearted it and moved on right so I'm like, okay, Taylor's still a little upset, which is understandable, but it's nothing that should like cause a huge problem during the night. So we see Tim and Alex arrive separately and I was like, yes, yes. At least they did not get back together. I was very happy to see that because I didn't want them to come to the party talking about, oh, we talked about it. We washed some dishes together. We took a nap together. We went back to Mexico and drove over another bridge and now we starting over. No, I didn't want to hear no shit like that stay apart okay so we see both tim and alex filling their friends in about the breakup what happened alex is still mad about the moment that tim had with her dad only to break up with her a couple days later and tim is telling the guys that there's nothing else for them to talk about he's done okay and i'm like tim tell them that you broke up with her for taking a nap tell them that so they can look at you like you crazy <laughs> You got one picking up his whole life to move across the country. You got another one who already got 17,000 kids and they making it work, but you breaking up over a nap. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. Tyler and Ashley should not be making anything work, okay? Not. But anyway, speaking of Ashley, she tells the ladies what's been going on in her life. He donated sperm a few years ago for a gay couple that he knew and they have kids. He didn't tell you in the pod. No, no, no. You guys don't understand. Every day this man gets up and gets me coffee. He fights for me and I've never had anyone fight for me. Next, we see Monica show up and she's alone, thankfully. She tells the ladies that she gave Steven a call. They spoke for like two hours and she just wanted to make sure that they were in a good space. He's a good guy. He just made a mistake, but she has no interest in ever dating him again. So now we see all of the other pod peeps arrive and I love these episodes when everyone gets to meet their first connections. It's always so juicy. So Katie comes in, she greets everyone. Everyone is so excited to see her. And Hannah's like, hey girl, you wanna meet Nick? I'm like, 
can she put her coat down first? You know what Hannah is giving right now? She's giving big Chelsea vibes. Remember when Chelsea tried to act like she was super cool with everything Jimmy did and that she was so unbothered? Remember that day at the beach when Chelsea tried to embarrass AD by saying, oh, how'd you get your butt so big? Because Jimmy said that AD was stacked. And by the end of the night, Chelsea was on the bed crying. Remember that? That's the same thing that Hannah does. She tries to act like she's cool with everything. And by the end of the night, it's an argument. So now we see Garrett and Taylor sitting down with Ashley and Tyler, and he's giving them the rundown about this whole little text message situation. But the issue is, his details are a bit different now than they were five minutes ago when he was explaining it to Taylor. Oh, I'm you sorry. responded? I'm sorry. This is different. Okay, well, let me see your phone. What did you say? It's over there. I can go get it, but You did say that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Tyler, first of all, why are you at this table? Why are you at this table? Your kids are calling you, sir. They on the phone. Something the same. God damn it. Omitting anything is a lie. We don't have any time to play these games. Um, Ashley, do you know that? Do you know? Let me bring the truck. Beep, beep, beep. Back it on up, baby. Back it on up. Because what I better not see in this scene is Ashley going harder on Garrett over some text messages than she did on Tyler over 87 kids. See, now, I know that all relationships end differently, some more cordial than others, but I don't see the need to tell your ex, hey, I'm in a new relationship. They gonna know when you pop up on Facebook or Instagram with your new boo, okay? And from the information that Garrett gave, it seems like that text message was a bit too friendly and kind of left the door open for further conversation between the two. And even though it's just a text message, I totally understand why Taylor is upset because five minutes ago, it was just a like. Now you're telling her it's a like and a reply. What's gonna be next? A like, a reply, and you sent a pic? The trickle truth is gonna cause her to keep asking questions because you didn't give her all the information when she asked you the first time. Now we see Marissa and Bolden and they're so excited to see each other so much that Ramses is like, okay, I'm gonna give y'all some space to have your own private conversation. They talk about how similar they were to each other. There is some light flirting in their conversation and Ramses pops right back up and he's like, yeah, we had a lot of similarities too. <laughs> we had a lot of similarities too. But by the end of the conversation, Marissa says that she's confident that she made the right choice and seeing Bolden now makes her feel like he's just a friend as he should be right meanwhile katie is at the girls table telling hannah like girl your man look good and i'm deciding if i want to take him from you <laughs> Okay, she didn't say exactly that, but Katie was doing a bit much. Next, we see Hannah doing a bit of self-reflecting, and she's telling Ashley that she's very hard and critical of herself, and she realizes that she's also doing that to Nick, and she knows that that's something that's not cool and that she needs to work on. Okay, Hannah, that's good that you can recognize that. And then she starts talking about their sex life. I think that sexually, too. You get off, and you probably don't even think to ask if she had hers. Things are gross and mal -like. It's just, like, not what he thinks about. It's like... Excuse me? Oh, Hannah, it all makes sense now. Now I see why you so frustrated and mean all the time. Nikki D don't do what? So he don't cook, he don't pay bills, he don't clean, and he don't do foreplay? Ooh, girl, why are y'all even together? Y'all aren't even sexually compatible, and for a lot of couples, sex is all they got. <laughs> it's funny, but it's not funny. <laughs> And Hannah, for you to say that you are fully aware how fragile a topic that is, especially for a man, and you're having this whole conversation on camera. <laughs> Hannah, you wrong. You are wrong, girl. I'm sure that you've discussed things with Nick that he kept private and did not and would never discuss on camera. Why are you doing this? Seriously, I'm laughing, but Hannah, girl, you're a mess. Because now we all know that Nick don't eat the box. Are we supposed to know that? I don't think we're supposed to know that. Or maybe he just don't want to eat your box. Moving on. So next we get this conversation between Katie and Nick. And the two are definitely flirting. They're complimenting each other, reminiscing on their dates when they were in the pods, telling each other how good they look on IG. I'm like, y'all doing way too much right now, okay? This is inappropriate. Katie does tell Nick that as much as she was feeling him in the pod, she got the sense that he lacked maturity. Ding, ding, ding. You were right, Katie. And she also says that she felt like he was objectifying her. Nick says that he was joking most of the time, and Katie tells him that he is a deep, kind, sweet person, but he leads with his charm and charisma too much, and he needs to lead with the real him. Stop trying to put on, okay? As Katie was talking, I just knew that all Nick wanted to do in that moment was fall into her arms because it must have been so refreshing to hear such kind words from a 
a woman as opposed to the constant badgering that he hears from Hannah on a daily basis. I know he wanted to look up at producers like, um, can I switch, please? I made the wrong choice. Can can I be with her instead? So now we are back to Taylor and Garrett and she is livid, okay? And she says that Garrett lied by omission. So you said you just liked it. But you're saying like there's a difference between just liking it and actually responding with words. Like I didn't think there was a difference there. Um, Garrett, we're not about to do that. We're not about to do that. You're a whole physicist, okay? Don't act dumb now. You know that there is a difference between hitting like and actually typing a response. You know that, Garrett. Don't piss me off. He's trying to say it's semantics when it's not. It's literally two completely different actions. Stop it, Garrett. Stop it. And like I said before, I do understand why Taylor is upset, but I don't think that this is something that they shouldn't be able to move past. I like how in this conversation, Taylor made it 1000% clear when she asks you a question, give her all the truth. Do not just give her the parts that you want to give her. Moving forward, if she asks you a question, tell her all the facts because if you don't and she finds out she has every reason to go crazy because you lying and in this scene why didn't he show her his phone remember when they were at the table with Ashley and Tyler he was like oh I would show you my phone but it's over there okay now y'all are over there where your phone at open it up so as apologetic as Garrett is in this scene now she's having doubts remember they're supposed to be visiting her family tomorrow and in all honesty I think that all of this would have been easily squashed had Garrett just gave her all the information before they walked into that party because like I said before that trickle truth will always have your partner wondering what else is there that they have not told me what else is there that I don't know but that's where episode 10 ends y'all let me know all your thoughts below all your predictions please no spoilers I have not seen episode 11 yet I'm gonna watch it as soon as I upload this video so I can get the next video out to y'all don't forget to hit like and subscribe make sure that you hit that notification bell and I can't wait to chat with y'all in the comments and I cannot wait to see you in my next video Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.